So in this video, we're going to talk about the rail and the pin system that we use to mount this 8020 extrusion to our welding table here. And to be able to do so as accurately as possible while still being simple enough for the home gamer machinist like myself to be able to pull it off. So this, this whole thing is actually very simple, but as usual, the devil is really in all the little details. So basically, we have this pin that we fit to our table. You know, it's the nominal 5.8 size, so it fits in these holes nicely. And then we have a bore inside these rails. And if you notice, on these rails, we have what I guess you could consider a conical interface, where we have a 45 degree cut on the pin, and then a matching 45 degree cut inside these bores. So essentially, this allows us to locate this pin inside the rail and fasten it down at the same time. Because if you think about it, those two angled cuts are working together in this case, and so this pin, theoretically, will always center itself up inside this bore. And then, we simply place this down onto the table raster we have one on either side, and we place these pins in, just like that, into the table. And then we have these fasteners that go through. This is just a quarter, twenty, what is it, socket head cap screw. And then on the bottom we use these fancy little things because they're nice. But we just screw it in to secure it down. And so, what this allows us to accomplish is to be able to fasten these rails anywhere on the table and then maintain good parallelism with the table raster because that's one of the just fantastic things about the Skynet system is that we're referencing the table and so that's what allows us to go from all the way down to kids push bikes to up to gigantic length tandems and you know you're only limited by the size of the table essentially now as it's drawn in the package everything will work fine and you'll end up with a wonderful system for building bikes. But there are a few extra credit things that can really take this to the next level, depending on what tools and skills you have available to you. So this table, which is a Sigmund brand, is marketed as having 5 8 holes in it, but they're actually more like 633 to 634 thousandths in my case. So the first obvious thing is we make these pins a precise fit because if we make these 5.8, 625 and then this table is 634 you know we can go ahead and close that up a bit and just make it as precise as possible but from there we also have to modify the bores and these rails a bit and basically all we need to do is make sure we have enough clearance for this pin to fit through and so for that that means using a boring head on the mill which it's really not as big of a deal as you may think if you have a boring head and know how to use it. But basically, I set it up on the very first bore, locked it in, and then it just became an extra tool change for each step. It was no big deal. And then we have a much better suited system here. But the end result of this is some very impressive rail placement for you know the tools and equipment we have available. But basically, when I snug this down, if I put both pins in, lock it in, and then if I pull it one direction or the other as I set it up, then these rails are about 0 .01 degrees of being parallel with the table raster. And also, do not forget to check your vise mounting on the mill before you start these boring operations. Do not assume that it is good, even if it was you who set up the vise the last time. Put an indicator on it and check it again because a small error over your 6 inch or whatever vise that will be magnified over this 14 inch long rail for the head tubes. So let's go back to the boring operation and I'll show you how I did it because that's the real important part here. Now if you do not have a boring head and you're going to make these bores the nominal 5 8 you should really rough it out first with a half inch or ideally 9 16 end mill. Then come back with the 5 8 mill, power feed it through, get a very nice cut and a nice finish to get it to your, the final size. 
going straight in with the 5 8 end mill will oversize it just a bit as that end mill tries to cut you know all of the material out of there and in my case that ended up being about five thousandths roughly but since I'm boring them out more after this initial cut with the boring head I actually just went straight to the 5 8 mill to rough it out and save time then I ran the boring head through to take out the last few thousandths it worked well in my case but you know check it out before you before you do anything like that but then after that we have to make the angled cut and for that we use a special tool that you may not already have set up in your shop but basically it's known as a three-quarter inch mill drill so think of it it's just like an end mill but it has a 45 degree tip on the end of it and the depth of this cut is actually not super duper crazy critical we just need to make sure that it's deep enough that the pins as they sit inside this rail won't interfere with the t-nuts later on and then obviously not too deep either so it's come out the other end so I basically just milled it by eye and then after the first one I set up a stop but took it down until I saw a clean cut all the way around the full circumference you know here in the bottom the bottom flat part of this extrusion so now another tricky part is the center to center distance between these bores on the rail so if we have our pins a very tight fit in our table raster but this distance is off slightly then we may not be able to put it down on the table so we rely on the milling machine digital readout and of course a reasonable tolerance on these pins themselves this is another part you have to consider if you're going to tune up the system to make it as you know as good as possible essentially so to that end after this first bore i'll use the digital readout to move over all in the same setup so essentially i just hung this off the vise but also pay attention to your dro after you bore the holes with the end mills because with this interrupted cut it's going to jiggle around a bit so in my case even with the table locked on my mill it would move a few thousands so basically after the end mill went through before I ran the boring head through, I would double check the DRO, make sure it was zeroed out right directly where I wanted it, and then feed it through. Because with such a light cut with the boring head, I mean, I was only taking maybe a few thousandths with the boring head. If it's off, you can center it up, and then it'll compensate for it as you know good as it can. And then it'll help make sure your bore is exactly where it needs to be. And then after that, of course, we come back to our table and then we test it out to make sure you know see if all the theoretical stuff can be pulled off in the real world and I'm very happy with how mine turned out again as you know I did some testing you know measuring out how parallel it is and basically it's within a few thousandths you know from over this 14 inches so it's going to be extremely accurate and the head tube rails are the longest ones the seat tube rails are a little bit shorter and then the axle rails are of course the shortest but I think that's going to cover it for today I wanted to do this video separately just because this system of mounting the 8020 extrusion to a table like this could really you know it could be used for many other applications but those of you that follow me on Instagram will see that this fixture is actually already completed uh, so the next video should be the final assembly and then some of the other little pieces and parts we haven't discussed yet so thanks for watching